Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania back with another episode. Oh, oh there it is! <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Wrestling fans have seen some crazy storylines make it onto TV, many of which we've discussed in past videos, but as bad as those are, they're tame compared to what we're about to show you. If you're my son, then that means that you and... Join us now as WrestleMania looks at the 11 craziest proposed storylines that thankfully never made it to WWE TV. Number 1. New Jack Stabs John Cena As fans saw on Dark Side of the Ring, former ECW star New Jack has no problem stabbing opponents in the ring. So perhaps Vince McMahon thought the man behind the Mass Transit Massacre – see our Final Bell episode for more details – would be a good pick to assault John Cena in a storyline designed to write Cena off TV so he could film the Marine. The storyline suggested Cena had been stabbed in a nightclub and was fighting both to save his career and his kidney. After leaving SmackDown, John Cena was involved in a melee in an after-hours club. Rumor has it that New Jack would have been revealed as the assailant, but with the WWE being a publicly traded company, the chances of this ever happening were remote. Let's hear what Jim Cornette had to say. New Jack never made it to WWE because they were never going to touch him. He was too controversial. They were afraid of lawsuits, they were afraid of bad publicity, they were afraid he was going to hurt somebody. Eventually, the WWE brought in wrestler Aaron Aguilera as Carlito's bodyguard Jesus, with it hinted at but never proven that he was the man who stabbed Cena on Carlito's orders. And if Jesus is at all connected in what happened at that nightclub a few months ago, Number 2. Big E as a Mailman One of the craziest stories going around concerns WWE superstar Big E, who recently shared an idea he had for his character before he signed with the WWE's developmental territory, Florida Championship Wrestling. During an appearance on The Bump, Big E recalled an idea that sounds like a classic Vince McMahon idea but, surprisingly, wasn't. I fooled around with some different ideas. Mailman, in case you didn't know, was a wrestling mailman. I don't remember all the intricacies, but it was at a time before I got signed and so my buddies thought, you know, we'd kind of bat around ideas, and we thought it would be a good idea. Thankfully for Big E, the people running the show in FCW thought better, nixing the idea. Big E still remembers the details of what he wanted to do, including his entrance. My name was gonna be Mel, last name Man and I was gonna come out with those short, like, old-school postal service shorts that were tight. You know what I mean? I had my mailbag. If Big E wrestled in the 90s, the gimmick would've fit in alongside similar workers turned wrestlers such as Garbage Man Duke the Dumpster Drossy and Hockey Player the Goon. Number 3. AJ Styles as a Luchador AJ Styles is one of the WWE's biggest stars, but there was no guarantee of success when he first started in the WWE. As fans know, plenty of successful wrestlers outside WWE have come in, only to be saddled with stupid gimmicks and or forced to assume a new identity. In the case of AJ Styles, he wasn't sure if he'd be allowed to keep his ring name AJ Styles when he entered the WWE. Speaking with Atlanta Georgia's Rock 100.5's Bailey and Southside program, the Phenomenal One discussed his first idea for his character if the WWE didn't let him use AJ Styles. I wanted to wear a mask. I love those luchadors. I'm so glad that didn't happen. I wanted to wear a mask and call myself Velocity. What a terrible name. As crazy as it might sound, AJ also didn't like his wrestling name, Styles. During the radio appearance, he revealed, I didn't have a name. Everybody always called me AJ anyway, so I stuck with AJ. And then the promoter is like, yeah, you're tagging with Damien Still. We need a last name. Styles, go. That's it. That's how the name came about. AJ Styles. I hated it. I hated Styles for a really long time. Everything worked out fine in the end, and fans didn't have to see Velocity. Number 4. Dean Ambrose as AJ Lee's Boyfriend For whatever reason, the WWE was always booking the super-talented AJ Lee as someone's girlfriend, so it should come as no surprise that Dean Ambrose was once considered for a storyline with AJ. 
Former WWE writer Kevin Eck discussed a storyline that had been pitched not only to push AJ Lee further, but to introduce Dean Ambrose, who hadn't debuted on the main roster yet. The rocky relationship between AJ and Brian culminated with AJ leaving him at the altar after she discovered that he was planning on having her committed to a mental institution after the wedding. Meanwhile, the creative team was looking for a plan B to bring Ambrose from developmental to the main roster. Plan A, a worked shoot angle with Ambrose and Mick Foley engaging in a war of words on social media, was scrapped after Foley legitimately took issue with something Ambrose said about him. My idea was for Brian's plan to have AJ committed actually succeed. We take her off TV for a little while before bringing her back in a dramatic fashion. She would return with her new boyfriend, Ambrose, whom she had met while they were both patients in the institution. Ambrose and AJ would wreak havoc, becoming WWE's version of Bonnie and Clyde, or Mickey and Mallory to use a less dated analogy. While the AJ and Ambrose's gangsters story certainly is different, WrestleMania thinks it's safe to say that Ambrose's role in The Shield worked out much better. Number 5. Kane's Green and Black Outfit No, wrestling's Big Red Machine wasn't going to transform into a St. Patrick's Day inspired character, but a member of D-Generation X. While this is a wild rumor, there is a popular tale that Kane's red outfit was going to be replaced by a green one when it looked like he was about to join DX. If you ain't down, stop it. According to Pro Wrestling Stories, in June 1999, around the time Kane started teaming with D Generation X, his original attire would undergo one more change. Keeping the one sleeve, his lower tight design went back to the symmetrical flames and a new sheer material on his top would replace the all-black leather look, making the outfit cooler and easier to breathe in. Rumor has it this new suit was originally going to be green, enforcing Kane's alliance with DX, but this has never been confirmed by sources in the know. Kane in DX never happened, and in hindsight it is probably for the better. Number 6. Baron Von Bava by 2004, the WWE had seen some real low points, including the infamous Katie Vick angle. That year, WWE writer Dan Madigan pitched an idea for the WWE to repackage John Heidenreich as a Nazi soldier who had been cryogenically frozen towards the end of World War II, with Nazi scientists hoping to unleash him on the world if Germany lost the war. According to an article at Bleacher Report, Madigan put everything he had into his proposal. Madigan admitted that he actually started goose-stepping in front of Vince and all the writers to show how the gimmick would work in practice. When Madigan finished explaining the concept to everyone, he sat down and felt extremely proud, feeling he had just pitched the idea of his life. Nothing could be further from the truth, and to Madigan's shock, the room went silent as Vince McMahon got up and exited the room without saying a word. A colleague would tell Madigan that that was a first and the beginning of the end for Madigan's career. By the end of 2004, he was done with the promotion. No word if he goose-stepped his way out the door. Number 7. Justin Bieber at SummerSlam SummerSlam is arguably the WWE's second biggest show, discounting its well-funded Saudi Arabian super shows, so it's no surprise fans have seen celebrities checking in, much as they do at WrestleMania. Thankfully, one celebrity who didn't make it was singer Justin Bieber. According to a 2015 story from former WWE writer Kevin Eck, the WWE planned on having Bieber team up with John Cena and The Big Show at 2014's SummerSlam to battle the Wyatt family. The Wyatt family has been badly booked through the years, but imagine how badly things would have gone if they counted the lights for Bieber. Number 8. Vince Thinks Incest Is The Best Although some of these ideas aren't Vince McMahon's babies, although you can be certain the writers pitched them based on Vinnie Mac's preferences for the perverted or bizarre, this one is pure Vince. When Stephanie McMahon was pregnant with her first child, Vince told the Billion Dollar Princess he had a great idea on how to incorporate the pregnancy into a WWE storyline. According to Stephanie herself, Papa Vince suggested an incest storyline where he was revealed as the baby daddy. When Stephanie refused, Vince decided to keep it in the family, suggesting Stephanie's brother Shane is the father. Stephanie didn't seem to think that was any better and turned it down. As batshit crazy as this storyline may sound, you can find the story on the McMahon DVD. WrestleMania isn't surprised by this storyline considering the short-lived beaver cleavage angle from the Attitude Era, 
featuring a heavily implied incestuous relationship between mother and son. Number 9. The Revival as Comedy Characters This story is prima facie evidence that the WWE has no idea how to book tag team wrestlers as anything more than a sideshow attraction, and yes, we understand the New Day sells a ton of merchandise, but in the end, they're still a sideshow. All we're worried about is punishing our opponents, mastering holds, and winning matches. That's it. As fans know, The Revival, now working as FTR, asked for their WWE release in 2019, but the WWE decided to give them a new gimmick in 2020, which would have transformed them into a ridiculous-looking comedy act. During the recent appearance on Talk is Jericho, Dax Harwood, aka Scott Dawson, explained, They gave us the last big spiel about how they wanted to use us. It was all Vince's idea. We had a meeting with Vince, and he presented us with these characters that were less than flattering to us. It wasn't what I felt we could represent or should represent, and I don't know too many guys who if they had any kind of self-worth, or if they believed in themselves as characters, as people, if they would have taken that opportunity. And we just said no, it's time for us to go. According to the talented team, their new look included bizarre costumes complete with bright colors, tassels, glow sticks, and even lipstick. Cash Wheeler, aka Dash Wilder, added that he laughed out loud when he saw the presentation, but both he and Harwood agreed to work the gimmick with the caveat that they were not signing a new contract. Number 10. Melina's a Man? 2006 saw a brief angle where Eminem manager Melina slept with Batista, only later to claim that things weren't consensual. And forced me into having sexual relations! As tacky as that angle was, the WWE apparently wanted to have the WWE Universe learn that Melina was actually a man. Thankfully, Stephanie McMahon, the WWE's head writer, nixed the storyline. In a case of art imitating life, Melina had a fling with Batista, and by all accounts, it was very consensual. Number 11. Gold Dust Gets Breast Implants Dustin Rhodes' transformation into the bizarre one Goldust saw him work angles that lived up to his nickname, but nothing like his real-world offer to further his WWE character by getting a boob job. According to Vince's WWE creative main man Bruce Prichard, Goldust felt the dual editions would help him lift a once successful career that had gone flat. In his memoir, Forgiven, Vince Russo claims Goldust offered to get his own Golden Globes if Vinnie Mac paid him $1 million. However, the evidence suggests that Goldust was just looking to boost his career and his bust. According to Pritchard, Goldust discussed the idea with a number of people backstage, so Vince was well aware of what Goldust wanted when he pitched the idea. He didn't want him to do it. We had jumped the shark so many times on this gimmick that this was something that wasn't going to happen. Dustin Rhodes felt that this was the only thing that can revive his career. He really wanted to get the breast implants, get double D's and stuff. But thank God Vince McMahon talked him out of it. Vince talked to Goldust out of getting artificial fun bags, undoubtedly saving Goldust from a decision he would have regretted. Well guys, there you have it, 11 of the craziest storylines that didn't make it to TV. What do you think of them? Be sure to leave your comments, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time for some more wrestling content.